good good evening everyone uh, today i am going to present my topic which is based on design and analysis of ferrite magnet assisted synchronous reluctance motor for ev applications now i am going to next slide it's slide third year slide kata ase slide number kele dia nai uh ha and next slide number to dia no ho sir slide kata ase total kata ase apni banai sen je 40 sir 40 40 okay okay তোর ইমামবা কোলো স্লাইড নাম্বার দিব লাগে লাস্ট লাস্ট সেমিস্টার কোলো ওকে কন্টিনিউ ওকে স্যার নাও কামিং টু কনটেন্টস ইট প্রোভাইডস ইন্ট্রোডাকশন প্রপোজ মডেল ওয়ার্ক প্রসেস সিমুলেটেড রেজাল্টস অফ 200 ওয়াট মোটর স্কোপ অফ ফিউচার ওয়ার্ক এন্ড কনক্লুশন নাও কামিং টু ইন্ট্রোডাকশন অবজেক্টিভ आवर অবজেক্টিভ is to design a ferrite magnet assisted synchronous reluctance motor for ev applications we are aiming a efficient and low cost ferrite magnet motor for that uh, for that we have to uh, we have to know the how this uh, this works come the, the uh, we have to know the historical background how it works how it starts so coming to the state of the art designs so at first uh, we already know uh, uh, elect, uh, for electric vehicles induction motors are used then when permanent magnets are developed then then uh, uh, permanent magnet synchronous reluctance motor are motors are developed which are very uh, great power density motors uh, which provide high torque high torque um, high torque at a very uh, less volume and it has two variants uh, one is a surface mounted pmsm and other one is ipm motor i will uh, i will discuss uh, discuss it uh, in later uh, in next slides then when uh permanent uh, magnets cost rises rapidly then researchers shift their interest to synchronous reluctance motor reinventing the synchronous reluctance motor here uh they they uh, use magnets for assistance of the uh, torque and its performance they use uh, power magnets but we uh, developed it further and use ferrite magnet ferrite magnet uh, i will explain it why ferrite magnets will be good for this kind of motors now uh, now coming to the designs uh, surface mounted mod, uh, motor in surface mounted motor uh, its design have some uh, problems we found uh, some problems so we have to uh, eradicate the problems so uh, i will uh, going to the problems its problem the next slide may have here okay in surface mounted pmsm the developed torque is entirely dependent on the magnets it does not produce any reluctance torque it is because the d axis and q axis permeance of surface mounted pmsm are same so it requires a greater amount of magnet volume thus it is very much expensive these are the problems with uh, surface mounted motors because it uh, only provides the torque from the magnet so the magnet has to be so strong that it uh, pull the pull the vehicle at a certain speed and there is a, another problem that uh, this surface mounted uh, motors uh, works in a very small speed range it does not provide a huge speed range 
there are some problems i, I will explain it uh, in the uh, in next slides about it then next comes to the interior permanent magnet motor in the next slide in interior permanent magnet motor uh, they use a technique they use the magnets in the interior of the rotor so that uh, it provides some saliency effect it provides some saliency saliency is uh, something like uh, uh, ld by lq inductance in uh, the factor of uh, inductance in uh, dx is uh, divided by inductance in qx so here two type of torques applied one is the permanent magnet torque which is the most significant one it is a very big one and the second one is the reluctance torque because of some saliency it provides some amount of reluctance torque also but it is not uh, quite significant so it uh, reduces uh, so here the amount of magnet used is little reduced than the surface mounted motor so its cost is little bit less expensive but still it's a expensive motor it also provides a, a low rpm range speed range then uh, comes the design which is a, a permanent magnet assisted synchronous reluctance motor here the main torque is the reluctance torque here the main torque is the reluctance torque and the permanent magnets are only used for the assistance only used for the some uh, some help in producing the torque or efficiency purposes so the main uh, torque is reluctance torque so uh, here the magnets uh, here the magnet uh, the motor is the, does not dependent on the magnets much so uh, only some uh, some amount of torque is produced by this magnet so coming to the disadvantages of permanent magnet in the next slide please. now coming to the disadvantages permanent magnets are made from rare earth materials neodymium magnet samarium cobalt these are they are of high cost high temperature environment causes rapid drop in performance of the permanent magnets it poses higher possibility of irreversible demagnetization under leading power factor conditions uh, i have uh, i have explained all the things in uh, in uh, some next slides here i am showing a neodymium magnet and a strontium ferrite magnet we are using a strontium ferrite magnet this uh, for this purpose i uh, i will explain you how the ferrite magnets work better in uh, some conditions than rare earth magnets uh, in the later in the following slides okay now coming to our proposed model our proposed model comprises of the overall view concise view and working principle now coming to our uh, overall view we are assuming or uh, we are aiming to de design a conventional efficient and reliable four pole 1500 rpm 2.2 kilowatt fm synchronous reluctance motor this will be done to compare the performance of induction motor and synchronous reluctance motor of the same size in the future when fabricated and it could be also used for uh, the main purpose of this uh, is uh, for ev applications so uh, it's a huge uh, amount of uh, power so uh, for our convenience we are using uh, uh, we are designing a prototype model first for 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 our convenience for our calculation help uh, it is a 200 watt motor 200 watt of the same type ferrite magnet assisted synchronous reluctance motor it could be used in electric bicycle application and other small domestic applications the work is mostly about the performance of the machine 
put a variation in dimension of the flux barriers, iron segment, and rotor magnet width. So, in the next slide, I'm going to tell about the working principle of how these uh, ferrite magnets uh, work in this way, how it is as, uh, assisting uh, the performance of the motor. Now, coming to the uh, synchronous reluctance motor, working principle of synchronous reluctance motor. In the next slide, sir. Uh, flux, uh, here you can see there is a flux linkage which is LD, uh, which is uh, lambda D. Uh, it works in the principle of uh, flux linkage like uh, lambda D and lambda Q. Q exists and D exists flux linkage. And the torque develop is that uh, that much 3 by 2 into number of poles all into ld minus lq into iq id so you can see here that uh, there is a negative term the negative term reduces the torque produced in a uh, in a synchronous reluctance motor that is the problem with synchronous reluctance motor so uh, so its uh, reluctance is uh, torque is so much reduced so, uh, if we add some uh, some uh, flux linkage to nullify the Q exist flux linkage, or the uh, to make the uh, Q exist flux linkage in positive value, then we will have a great amount of torque produced. That is the uh, that is the trick here we applying. So uh, that is our our uh, FM synchronous reluctance motor here we use the ferrite magnets in the q axis of the motor in the q axis in the uh, opposite direction of the state of flux so when uh, so here you can see the lambda q is uh, modified lambda q is now lq iq plus lambda mq pm is a uh, this is the magnet uh, flux linkage by magnet. So now the now the torque equation becomes this. A positive term comes, which uh, which nullifies the negative term and enhances the torque of the motor. So this is the concept. Uh, that's why it is called uh, FM assisted ferrite magnet assisted synchronous electric motor. Because uh, the ferrite magnets are only used for the assistance, okay. And also, you can see in the uh, figure, you can see in the figure uh, by applying number of layers in the figure uh, in the motor rotor, we uh, we decrease the power factor angle. We decrease the power factor angle of the motor. So power factor increases and efficiency increases in the motor. Uh, number of layers see in this figure uh, figure number of layers increases its uh, efficiency and reduces the uh, reduces the, says the power factor angle the black line is the uh, synchronous reluctance motor and the red the blue and violet purple uh, is the uh, that plan okay now coming to uh, there uh, there is a picture uh, I have uh, attached here on uh, here it only shows how the inductance LD 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 and LQ are affected by applying the magnet layers. The LD is uh, so much constant it, it does not get any impact but uh, because of the high current high current high flux density from the 4.5 uh, current value, you can you can see there is a little uh, the, uh, deep, uh, little uh, uh, it's coming down a little bit LD value because of it's uh, the metal uh, gets saturated. But uh, um, the below uh, below the L, uh, LQ we can see the LQs are changing with the number of uh, layers we use. Okay. Now coming to the next slide work process uh, how we started our work so it comprises of main design dimension state order design and rotor design so
so main dimension here we have done the designing of a 200 watt tire twin ssl prototype motor so stator of, of this motor is the uh, is same as an induction motor uh, because uh, uh, changing the stator will cost it uh, so much more because uh, there will be so much talk like uh, so much uh, so much cost like uh, tooling cost and everything fabricating cost will be uh, will be uh, increased so we keep the stator design same but we work on the rotor only only work on the rotor okay so uh, here we have calculated all the values for that uh, that much power output the length of the motor is 55 m, uh, millimeter shown in the uh, table stator out uh, outer diameter is 89.6 mm stator inner diameter is 46.0 mm these are all the uh, values we have calculated air gap length is uh, 0.3 mm and it is a 1500 rpm motor so now coming to the stator design here also uh, the required all the factors and all the things are calculated but these are uh, these are in my report the detailed calculation are in my report but here uh, i have not uh, up, uh, attached this i only attach the tables these are the values flux is 0.7873 uh, uh, milliweber thick okay then this is the stator stator okay now, now coming to the slot dimensions the stator is done now coming to the slot dimensions uh, in the slot dimensions we we calculated all the values like limb width all the uh, all are there in the table slot depth uh, it, uh, the, uh, all the things are calculated based on the, the amount of area we required for the conductors to put there and there uh, there is a space factor of 0.4 next slide sir now coming to the uh, and based on this based on uh, the uh, slot dimensions based on the slot dimensions we have calculated the leakage inductance of the motor the leakage inductance uh, mainly uh, mainly dependent on the slot dimensions here but uh, the calculations are not shown here okay now coming to the rotor region part sir uh, some slide, uh, slides back to auto design rotor design next slide sir. next now rotor design part flux barrier now here uh, in the rotor design we have there are some uh, predefined uh, formulas. Uh, uh, I refer to a Kassit site uh, uh, thesis. There, from from that, I have uh, I have uh, done the, all the calculations of the rotor uh, rotor design, rotor geometry. Here, according to him, the alpha m there is a alpha m angle, which is a uh, uh, there uh, there must be some barriers for for the proper distribution of the flux in the rotor there must be some barriers flux barriers for uh, proper flux distribution so uh, we can uh, but there is a certain value that uh, uh, that uh, the, that depends on the number of stator slots and number of pole of the motor so here our number of slots is 24 a number of pole is uh, two, uh, four, so the flux barrier. There is a formula we calculated. So flux barriers must be four, must be four. Uh, if it increases than four, then it will not. Uh, it will not work. It will not work in a better way. So uh, these are the values. So and uh, and you can see in the flux. Uh, in the innermost region the iron iron width should be uh, should be greater but in the outermost regions 
the iron will should be smaller so that the flux could move through the innermost or outermost all the flux should be in the uniform way so that the um, iron does not get any saturation so when it gets saturation the ld value ld value come down comes down and it will provide less torque so our aim is to provide all the flux through uniformly through the through the rotor so uh, in the uh, you can see here i am i am showing a figure in the next slide sir in the next slide i am showing a figure where the stator flux is moving through the rotor flux, uh, rotor iron segments so in the next slide okay here in the next slide uh, i am showing the stator flux is moving through the rotor rotor flux a uh, rotor iron segments here you can see in the next slide sir here you can see oh yes sir this uh, here you, uh, here the stator flux is moving through the rotor, rotor uh, iron segments here if uh, if we does not increase the length uh, uh, here you can see the innermost iron segment has the highest length so it has the highest reluctance part and the outermost uh, iron segment has the lowest length so it has the high uh, it has the lowest reluctance part so the uh, in that case the magnet uh, mag mag magnetic flux will come through the outermost uh, iron segment but for that for that purpose we we increase the width of the innermost iron segment so that the reluct uh, the reluctance is come to a close value okay now in the next slide the operating point operating magnet operating point here how we magnet is placed in a structure determines its uh, operating point here according to our stator design magnet operating points are calculated at 27 degree centigrade the figure shows the load line at zero stator excitation here there are some formulas uh, from which we calculated the bm the operating point at uh, zero stator excitation the operating point which is 0.3609 tesla because we use a, a ma magnet of 0.4 tesla which is the remnant flux density and hm is uh, is its operating field 26744 ampere per meter when the hm equal to ha which is the applied field plus internal field its internal field already available internal field and applied field when the applied field is zero the internal field is the operating point okay so when the stator is uh, excited the load line moves to the left side here i am uh, in the figure i am showing a uh, showing a arrow going arrow uh, the load line will move to the left side uh, okay now uh, now coming to the field weakening operation in the next slide sir in the next slide we we are uh, we will talking about field weakening operation in the next slide a uh, field weakening operation for high speed operation of the motor field weakening is used for that demineralizing field is applied that's how knee point comes into play here you can see in the figure in the figure 3.8 you can see uh flux are uh, the uh, there is a demineralizing flux in the q axis which passes through the magnets and the uh, air gaps this flux overall uh, this flux uh, this flux overall reduces the total magnetic flux in the uh, in the in the motor 
when the total magnetic flux in the motor reduces or demagnetization effect works then what happens the induced emf will get reduced in the equivalent diagram uh, you can see there is a z omega lambda m so when the total flux of the motor reduces the induced emf also reduces at the same time uh, in, when induced emf reduces uh, the motor draws more amount of current into the motor uh, then what happen a slight increase in the torque happen and it will uh, it will uh, uh, it will uh, run the motor at high speed and it will uh, uh, high speed so that the emf the induced emf gets uh, increases it becomes increases and uh, it uh, it uh, according to the loaded condition the load factor it will adjust itself and uh, so it attains a higher higher speed level it attains a higher speed level at field weakening operation so for that we have to know some uh, some things like uh, how much uh, negative flux we can apply to the magnets so that the magnets does not get demagnetized so it's a important thing we have to discuss on it uh, so next slide is the irreversible demagnetization effect in the next slide i am showing the irreversible demagnetization effect so in the next slide okay irreversible demagnetization here you can see this is a demagnetization curve in the next slide sir uh, here uh, an irreversible demagnetization is the result when vr means remnant flux density drops in magnitude the deviation can be uh, obtained by an by an applied field here you can see this is the operating point qo oq is the operating point is the operating uh, load line when the magnetizing field is applied on the motor what happen then uh, the the uh, the flux density drops linearly drops linearly to some extent to a point of c which is uh, we know as a knee point the curve follows a linear path to the knee point in this region uh, the region is c br c br so in this region if the applied field is removed then what happen the magnet will attain its original flux density it will recoil to the br original br so but when you apply more apply uh, more uh, demagnetizing field to increase the speed of the motor then, then what happens after the c c point after it uh, uh, after it uh, passes the c point the curve rapidly drops in the its uh, flux density then it attains a m position after that if you uh, uh, if we uh, remove the field it will not go to its original position it will follow a linear path which is parallel to the previous one and attain a new position which is b new in the figure you can see which is b new which is always less than the original value and previous value so it will hamper the motor it will hamper the motor uh, so the magnets will not uh, work uh, any more in the uh, original bear bear so its uh, its torque capability power density will be reduced definitely so we have to be careful for this point knee point so in the next slide so in the next slide i am applying 
uh, I am attached. Uh, I have attached two curves. Comparing two curves, like one is the rear earth magnet, which is new uh, new linear magnet, and other one is the strontium magnet. In the next lecture, we use demineralizing curve. In the next lecture, so here. Uh, in the right, you can see, you can see a strontium ferrite demineralizing curves. At sir, uh, in this figure, uh, in 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 the right side, uh, this is the strontium uh, strontium ferrite uh, ferrite demineralizing curve. Here you can uh, you can see there are some uh, dots. Uh, there are some dots, knee uh, points at different temperature at 27 degrees centigrade. The knee uh, point is around zero degree, but when uh, at at 80 degree or when the temperature rises when the temperature rises its knee point uh, is uh, going downward it's go, uh, going downward in negative uh, negative like uh, minus 0.3 tesla minus 0.2 tesla so it uh, it implies that at uh, at higher temperature the magnet will perform in a better way ferrite right, magnets perform in a better way because we can have a very high speed range we can apply the magnetic fluxes and very high speed uh, at in a very high speed range but in case of uh, neodymium magnets in case of ne neodymium magnets uh, you can see the at uh, when the uh, temperature is increasing the knee point is also rising when the temperature is increasing the knee point rises here yeah, rises here so what happened the speed range it can attain is uh, reduced so its performance also reduced, and its torque uh, uh, and its uh, flux value uh, decreases rapidly. So this is a this is a problem with the rare earth magnet, and uh, and there is another problem with rare earth magnet that these uh, these magnets uh, have a high electrical conductivity. So at uh, at uh, at higher speed range at higher speed range it will uh, it will develop so much heat in its structure so uh, heat uh, when the heat rises the uh, the knee point also rises and its power performance decreases so uh, it is a uh, very good for us with ferrite magnets it may have some small uh, amount of uh, flux density but it uh, works in a better way in high uh, and it put uh, the ferrite magnets um, motors we could use in uh, 24 uh, into higher high duty cycles. Hello, hello, Nello. Ah, sir. Ah, sir. Okay, go to the result part here. Yeah. Okay. Oh, okay, sir. Okay, sir. Okay. Uh, go, this go is the result part. Then. Uh, meeting okay. will be in five minutes. Uh, go to the result part. Okay. Okay, sir. Okay, sir. Meeting immediately. Okay. Okay, sir. In a, a equivalent diagram, we have uh, we have calculated all the values. Okay. Uh, okay. We have uh, calculated all the values. Then next, yes, yes. Uh, next is the sim simulated result. In the simulated result, we have uh, calculated the induced EMF. This is the induced EMF we have calculated, and this is the simulation result which we have found in the Maxwell. This is the simulation result of the induced EMF. And sir, in the next slide, in the next slide, and uh, there's a torque. We have uh, calculated the torque is uh, 1.27 newton meter. The torque is 1.27 newton meter, and the simulated torque is around 1.2 newton meter. It is uh, in great correlation with our calculated value. Now comes the uh, variation in torque with load angle. Variation in torque uh, with load angle. Here, this is the simulation. Uh, this is the talk 1.2 we are we have uh, what we have calculated we have found it in the simulation and this is the talk variation in uh, with uh, load angle at 60 degree we are getting a higher stock which is 2 newton meter is the graph and full load is 1.2 and in the next slide we calculated the uh, we simulated the cogging torque because here uh, here the torque is already less so we have to calculate uh, simulate the cogging torque also and nullify so we uh, skewed the stator slots half a slot so that the to uh, cogging torque will be reduced 
then comes the core loss we have calculated the core loss the calculations are here in my report that is 4.2 watt at 50 50 hertz frequency and the simulated uh, simulated core loss is there it is around 5 less than 5 so it is a very good correlation with our predicted value this is the cooking dog and that is the our core loss value and this is the animated motor sir in next slide we have a, a animation of motor revolving you can check we have calculated just uh, stator parameters stator dimensions for a 2.2 kilowatt motor which uh, we are aiming to do the this is the data sheet we have provided here now scope of future work we will optimize the design of the prototype version with variation in barrier width here uh, here the work is uh, mostly in the same barrier width but we will design it in uh, uh, we will uh, uh, optimize it for uh, different barrier width and fabrication of the 200 watt prototype machine will be initiated lastly we will done the rotor calculation and simulation of the 2.2 kilowatt motor and that's all sir then conclusion hello thank you sir you ah, sir. Did, did a very good uh, work actually and uh, if you, you will give you will be given 10 marks then for yourself how much mark you want to give yourself uh, out of 10, i have uh, how much yes, mark sir. you will give yourself I have done sir a lot of uh, hard work here, so uh, I think uh, I need ten sir. Uh, listen, uh -huh. can you show the difference between what is the leakage flux and linkage flux? Ah uh, yes sir. Yes sir. Uh, it uh, the leakage flux is the uh, because of the stator uh, slots, the uh, because of the conductors and the slots. There are some flux which uh, move around the uh, move through the coils. We can say the through the coils, which will not impact in the uh, in torque generation or uh, it uh, it could not deliver the power because of there are so much uh, so much conductors in a in a slot. Some some flux goes through the conductors and nullifies each other. Like these are some leakage flux, which are okay. flux. and uh, linkage flux is the uh is the flux which uh which uh like uh uh which uh produced by uh, uh in the in the which produce the uh, in the in the uh, state of uh flux like in the d exists uh in the d exists uh if if i put i i exist current then d exists flux is produced so i'm uh can't explaining okay uh, linkage flux is just the flux uh, produced in a solenoid that is flux yes. multiplied with the number of tons that is Done. linkage flux. That is linkage flux. Okay, okay another question. Yes. If you have a permanent magnet, okay. Hello, sir. Uh, a, a permanent magnet, okay. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You have a permanent magnet. It has high retentivity. Yes, sir. And it, uh, it has high coercivity. Yes, sir. Uh, is it okay or uh, it should low retentivity or low coercivity or uh, high retentivity, retentivity, low coercivity or high retentivity, low coercivity or low retentivity, high coercivity? Oh, it is possible or not? Uh, you are uh, asking about high retentivity. Uh, Retentivity mm -hmm. and coercivity. Ye high rena chahiye ya low rena chahiye. Kaun sa high, kaun sa low rena chahiye. Coercivity hume baat high chahiye sir. Coercivity because uh, coercivity ke wajah se flux zero. Jab hamara uh, flux zero ho jata hai, wo coercivity hai. Or intrinsic coercivity apka jab magnetization zero ho jata hai, wo intrinsic. Retentivity kya hai? Coercivity kya bolo? Pehle coercivity bolo kya? Sir coercivity jab flux the, the flux density, मतलब B, uh, B zero हो जाता है, वो coercivity है, 
वो द मैक्सिमम फ्लक्स मतलब इट कैन हैंडल इज इट्स कोर्सिविटी सपोज यू हैव इनफाइनाइट कोर्सिविटी ओके हां यस सर इफ यू हैव इनफाइनाइट कोर्सिविटी देन व्हाट विल हैपन टू योर मैग्नेट अह Uh, its uh, flux will not get uh, zero. Uh, it always provide a uh, high. You have a ferrite, okay? Ah, okay, sir. You have a ferrite. You made a electromagnet, okay? Yes, sir. And you magnetize it, okay? Yes, sir. And that that permanent magnet has infinity coercivity. Then what will happen? Hmm. uh we uh, we applied a demagnetizing field in the in the uh, magnet sir are you getting my point sir yes. we are applying okay ha ha sir okay ha ha sir okay ferrite se jo tumne ye log usko electromagnetic banaya aur usko hmm. magnetize kar diya electric field de ke theek hai ha sir aur suppose wo ferrites ka coercivity infinite hai hmm so kya hoga सर हम किस डायरेक्शन में फ्लक्स दे रहे हैं वो मतलब मतलब फेराइट को हम डायरेक्शन में दे दिया ये कितना टाइम लगेगा डीमैग्नेटाइज होने में बोलो तो सर क्या कोर्सिंग भी अगर इनफाइनाइट है तो डीमैग्नेटाइज होने में कितना टाइम लगेगा और होगा ही होगा ही नहीं सर Yes, it will not demagnetize. Ah, sir. Yeah, अच्छा है ना अगर magnetize नहीं हो रहा है तो coercivity high होना चाहिए ये permanent magnet का. और retentivity? हाँ sir. Retentivity मतलब जब तक जब आपका वो demagnetization आप flux दे दिया वो जो curve है आपका negative direction में जो linear curve है sir वो उसमें जब मतलब field हमने हम remove कर दिया तब कितना जल्दी और कितना मतलब वो मतलब दर्शाता है वो रिटेंटिविटी कितना जल्दी वो उसका फ्लक्स अटेन कर लेता है कितना अमाउंट ऑफ वो फ्लक्स नेगेटिव डायरेक्शन में वो अपोज कर सकता है मतलब यस अगर हाई रिटेंटिविटी है तो इट विल मैग्नेटाइज विद इन नो टाइम विदाउट फील्ड इट विल मैग्नेटाइज इफ इंफिनिटी है तो विदाउट फील्ड इट विल बी मैग्नेटाइज यस सर तो अब बताओ तो रिटेंटिविटी हाई होना चाहिए कोर्सिविटी हाई होना चाहिए is it right yes sir okay